Hey everybody, it's Levi Clay back again for another vlog. And in this vlog, we're gonna be talking about the subject of notation. And that would be tablature versus standard notation, and more so the snobbery that comes with uh, anybody that can read, the way they will look down on people that use tablature. Um, really, there's three sides to this argument. You've got standard notation, you've got tablature, and you've got guys that don't read whatsoever. And the idea that, that one of them is, is more superior to the other um, is really the focus here because that in itself is ridiculous. Let's really take this back to the, the sort of start of music. When music started, music wasn't written down. Music was played, music was enjoyed, and it was a social thing. So you would do it as, as a group. There was no need to write anything down. There was no way to write anything down would be a better way of putting it. Um, so music was played. This is a, a fantastic way of playing music because when you do this, you're never relying on your eyes. I mean, you can practice uh, and, and develop your eyes as part of your music playing skills, but in the grand scheme of things, your eyes should never be as important as your ears. So, as I say, going back that far, you'd really be talking about people that had very well-developed ears, and you still see that today. Generally speaking, guys that don't read whatsoever, they tend to have better ears than guys that read a lot. Um, that's an observable fact. Next comes tablature, and here's the really interesting part. Tablature is not a new invention. Tablature is not something that came out in the 80s. It may have been popularized for the, uh, for the electric guitar in the 80s. Um, if you go back far enough, uh, you know, like the, the 50s, yes, you weren't seeing a lot of tablature. All of the guitar books, the Burt Whedon play in a day style stuff, was all written notation. But tablature has a much, much longer history than that. Tablature goes back, like really back, like hundreds and hundreds of years back like the 1500s back. Tablature was the original way to notate stringed instruments, the lute, for example. Um, there's also tablature for organ music. I mean, take a look at this. I'm looking at it and I have no idea what this means, but to somebody back in the day, this was a shorthand form of writing music for the organ, bizarre. Now let me just cut in a couple more examples so you can see what tablature that's hundreds of years old would look like. This is old, 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 old music. There's nothing wrong with this as a practice. We were writing music like this and it wasn't looked down on. So I don't know where this idea of looking down on people that use tab comes from. So let's throw in a disclaimer. Yes, I use tab, but I'm also a very good sight reader. It's horses for courses for me. Um, obviously, when I learned to play the guitar, it was using tablature. And as I progressed, after a couple of years, I started developing my reading skills. I went away uh, and did my degree in music, and by the end of that, my reading was shit hot. Um, so I have experience in both worlds, and obviously I work as a transcriber. So I'm dealing with written notation day in, day out. But I appreciate that they, they all have their strengths. There are certain areas of music where reading um, tablature or, or notation is not beneficial to you whatsoever. For example, in a jam setting, when you're when you're jamming with people, I would say you know the ability to um, to read is probably irrelevant to someone like Jimmy Herring when he's playing um, in one of his jam bands. Uh, the other side of things, though, as a reader, is it will prepare you for for uh, aspects of the professional working world. So if you want to go out and be doing show tunes. Um, West End style or Broadway, if for any of my American friends out there, um, those sort of things, that would require a, a degree of reading. But here's the interesting thing. What I learned as part of my degree is there's a big difference between sight reading and reading skills. Now actually, sight reading is not something I promote whatsoever and I don't, I don't um, cover it with any of my students. Sight reading is the ability to take a piece of written music, put it in front of you and boom, you can read it, go. It's an impressive skill, but it's not that useful a skill when you really think about it. There's not all that many settings where you'll find yourself in where you're sat down, you're given a sheet of music and they go, right, go, we're recording. Or go, now's the live show. That's never how things work. Things tend to be, right, here's the music, uh, rehearsals are next week, we'll see you at nine o'clock. That's a very different thing. That's what you would call reading skills. That's the ability to take written music and work out how to play it over a period of time. Those skills, I believe, are considerably more essential. They will open up a lot more avenues for you as a, uh, 
as a student of music because it means that you don't just have to learn from guitar. A lot of the books on the library behind uh, the camera um, are saxophone books or piano books or, or flute books or violin books because there's a lot that I can learn from them because I'm not limited to what the tablature will present for me. Let's present a bit of a counter argument though. Tablature is not a bad thing and as I said historically it's got just as long uh, a history in written music. In fact, actually, let's take a look at this. I'm cutting this footage here so you can see this is some of the oldest examples of written notation, like standard notation. Um, it's something that's evolved a lot since its inception. It's something that has mutated and changed to the form that we know it to be today. Um, so this idea that, that standard notation has you know hundreds and thousands of years of history and then tablets have come along and is a juvenile way of doing things is is it's patently false, to be honest. Um, so the benefit of Tab, like, like I said, is probably the reason that most of you stuck with the guitar, because you went in to, you picked up a guitar, you maybe you went for lessons, maybe you picked up some books. You didn't need to learn to read notation. You could play very quickly by using tablature. Now this is the main benefit of tablature, as you know. It enables people to play uh, quickly, which is wonderful, because that's why so many people play this instrument. It's very easy to play. It's very easy to just, you know, keep plodding along. I remember reading tabs and getting tabs off the internet. We all know the downsides of tabs though. Tabs don't contain notation, uh, rhythmic notation. So when you're looking at tablature, unless you know the song, it's utterly useless. If I presented you with a tab for a Hellcat Molly song, uh, you would not know how to play it unless there was some sort of notation. So there are massive downsides to the tab, right? But at the same time, there are massive downsides to the notation. Um, as you know, the guitar, we have six strings, or some of you seven or eight maybe. Um, it's kind of like having six or seven mini pianos. We can play the note, the high E string, the, the note that you would notate as, as an E. We can play that in six places on the guitar. So if you need to play the notes E to F, there are numerous ways that you can play E followed by F in the same octave. Um, that can be problematic. Now, as a good reader, you, you sort of get to know your neck and systems so you don't find these uh, as problematic. But imagine notating something like, um, I don't know, Jerry Donahue solo, something that's going to have um, a lot of open strings and, and contrary motion in bends. Um, something like that in notation would be a nightmare. I've been transcribing a lot of Scotty Anderson recently and he uses a, a lot of open strings and, and double stops and triple stops for his solos um, at speed. Reading that would be nigh on impossible without putting so much ink on the page that you're really, you know, putting the fingerings in and the and Roman numerals for positions that you're, you're reading this stuff in. So it's not ideal, no matter which way you look at it. So what I'm getting at here is there's no such thing as a perfect system. You can be somebody that plays by ear and there are going to be drawbacks. You can be somebody that plays exclusively with tab, there are going to be drawbacks. Your ear is going to suffer and also you're not going to be well prepared to, to work professionally in anywhere that you might have a reading gig. And as a sight reader, you, it's not a perfect system. You know, if I present you with a, a solo that's in an open tuning, like a slide guitar solo, you probably can't read in an open tuning, right? Tab eliminates all of that. So what I'm suggesting is that actually the two things work perfectly in conjunction, as you know from reading any um, tab book printed in the last 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, there's always that uh, tablature on the bottom and written notation above. This to me is uh, it's, it's virtually a perfect system. I'm always reading the two. I'm reading the tablature because that tells me where my fingers need to be, tells me what position things are being played in, but I'm always reading the top line as well because that tells me how long these notes are played for. That might seem scary to some of you out there having to read two lines of music at the same time, at all times, but you know, think about pianists, they're always reading two lines of music and they tend to be two different lines of music and they're also having to do things with their feet as well. And Think of the poor organ players that have to do considerably more. So it's not a hard skill and something that can be developed. Um, I'll just close off with one little anecdote and this is the frustrating thing. The reason I, I'm so passionate about this is because I spent a lot of time getting my reading good, but in my professional life, I've never been paid to read anything. I could be annoyed by that or I could look at that and go, there's a lesson to have learned. I'm happy that my reading skills are or maybe were as good as they were. Um, I've, I've not had to read in a while, so maybe my skills aren't where they used to be. But definitely a skill that I have enjoyed working on over the years. All I'm getting at guys is 
don't beat on people just because they don't do things the same way as you do. There are different ways, there are, as they say, there are many ways to skin a cat. Thanks for checking this video out, guys. I'd appreciate it if you check out my album, Hellcat Molly's Out of the Ashes. A lot of time, effort, and uh, passion went into it. I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed making it. I will see you on the next vlog. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Cheers.